Welcome to the Plant Free MD Podcast with Dr. Anthony Chafee, where we discuss diet and nutrition and how this affects health and chronic disease, and show you how you can use this to optimize your health and happiness, both mentally and physically. All right. All right. Hey, everyone. This is uh, Dr. Anthony Chafee, and uh, we're doing another episode of Plant Free MD Podcast. And today, my guest is my lovely girlfriend, Elle Marie. And she's going to be telling us about her experiences and her success with a uh, carnivore diet and, uh, and how that's affected her. Bill Marie, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me on. You are very welcome. Um, all right. So for people that don't know much about you, can you tell us who you are and what you do and uh, how you came across the carnivore diet? Okay. Um, where do I start? All right. Well, yeah, my name's Elle Marie. Um, I have absolutely no background in like anything medical or nutrition at all so i have my own business in the uh, hair extension industry i have my own line of hair products that i wholesale um worldwide but yeah so that's what i do and how i came across the carnival diet i have quite an interesting story actually so this weird guy but this weird guy <laughs> he would you <laughs> shut up about me no yeah, so are bad for you yeah, how plants are trying to kill you. I was like, mm. surely not. Like, what the <laughs> heck is going on here? The first time that I heard you speak about it, I was like, what planet is this guy from? Where the heck does he come from? And where do I run? <laughs> where are the exits? And yet, and yet she stayed for another four hours, just by the way. Yeah, I don't know why. Why? <laughs> I think I was just, I felt like I was stuck. <laughs> like, Oh, no. <laughs> Nonsense. First of all, she, I was at work the first time that we met, I was, I was working, I was on call we were supposed to meet up and we were supposed to like, uh, just hang out and talk. And then I just kept getting calls and calls and calls. And so it wasn't until like two in the morning until I actually just could meet her. And so she had been out with her friends. Um, and, and she had been like waiting for like hours and I came meet her. And then we like, we talked for like literally four hours after that so like i don't i don't know i didn't i didn't quite get the impression that you were just trying to get out of there as soon as possible i hadn't been on the dating and scene before here, so you know. <laughs> i hadn't been on the dating scene before so i didn't know how to how to act i didn't know when when i was meant to leave like my girlfriend and i had this um had this thing going where if we were ever in a situation that we wanted to leave we'd message each other sos and you know the person who received the sos message had to call and be like my dog is dying. Like you need to come right now and help me. Or, you know, or I would say, you know, my kid's just fallen over and smashed his head. Like I'm heading to the hospital, meet me there right now. And, um, so I was like, okay, this is the perfect time to use it. <laughs> so I need to like use this right now. This guy is crazy. Um, so I, I didn't end up using that. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but I was thinking about it. And, um, I anyway, I remember going home in the car thinking like the carnivore diet, like what the heck is this? Mm -hmm. Like, it's just insane. And then I ended up, <laughs> but then I ended up thinking, you know what? I can't judge a book by its cover. Like I, I need to give the benefit of the doubt and maybe just see mm -hmm. what else there is, you know, cause I was actually quite interested. I was like, this is the first time I've come across this. Like I'm intrigued. I'm scared, but I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> so then, um, the first time you asked me to come over for dinner, I was like, what the heck are we going to eat? Yeah, I thought that would have been obvious. Yeah, I was like, wait, we're not going to have dessert. No. We're not going to have vegetables. No. I barely eat meat. And you're like, well, I can cook you anything, but it will mainly be steak. But it will be the best steak you've ever had. <laughs> hmm. Okay, this guy's a bit full of himself. Like, there is no way that this steak is going to be the best steak I've ever had. Confidence born of demonstrated ability. So I had the steak and I remember eating it, taking a first bite, staring at me and <laughs> like, so how does it taste? And it was the best I ever had. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's all right. Yeah. It's all right. And, um, I was like, okay. I remember like thinking to myself, I remember you telling me about your fridge. Okay. I need to like check this out. But I need like, a, like, how am I going to do this without you like looking and thinking that I'm weird? So I, I got a moment looking into your fridge and I was, I was shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, I'm kidding. You literally only have meat in your fridge. And I remember taking a picture and sending it to my friend. 
And she's like, get out of there. Right now. Yeah. Leave. He's going to cut you up. He's going to put you in his fridge. fridge. I don't know like, if, leave. There's no room in the fridge. I don't know if he... <laughs> there's there's already, no room in the yeah, fridge. Yeah, there's like so much meat. Several vagrants in there. So. <laughs> That's so funny. I, I remember you telling... I, I actually got offended when, you, when you'd when say to me, like, you need to try this carnival. Like, you need to try it. You're going to feel good. You're going to put on healthy weight. Like, you're going to look yeah. really good. And I remember thinking to myself, I'm already thin. I'm already... You know, I've never thought about diets before in my life. So That's you're like, <laughs> you're like, you gotta eat more meat. And I was like, God doesn't like me. He's trying to like back me up. Like, what the heck is going on? At that time, I was like, I'm not gonna do this because, first of all, you're telling me to do it, and I hate doing anything that someone tells me to do, as you already know. She does. But I loved your steak. When am I gonna have the next one? Because I really, really like that. Really liked it, and I realized that I was cooking steak wrong this entire time. I ended up having a lot more meat into my diet at that point you know I looked a little bit more into it and then I was you were giving me more meat like every time I'd see you you'd give me a lot of meat and I was I was happy with that and then I don't think it was until uh end of last year when we went away and I was like okay this guy is gonna only have meat and we're only gonna eat eat meat and drink water either try it now full on properly because before I was I did eat, like put a lot more meat into my diet but I wasn't like full carnivore then so the end of last year I'll just do it I'll try and see how I feel because I was already feeling a lot better adding just a little bit more meat into my diet I felt really good that weekend was actually the first time where, where I'd actually felt amazing my skin cleared up completely I think we were gone for like three or four days I can't remember it was a little while and I came back, I actually feel really good. I feel really energized. I've, I've slept really well. Um, and then when we got back from that trip, I was like, okay, I'm going to really try this. Like, I really want to do this. You, at that point, you'd stopped asking me to do it. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Beginning of, of this year, my mum saw me for the first time in, in um, like over a month. And she's like, you're looking really, really good. Like your skin's looking good. Your body's looking good. Like, what are you doing? And then that's when I explained to her what I was doing. And I'd noticed it as well. And then a few weeks after that, I remember touching the back of my head. And I was like, where the heck is my psoriasis gone? Like, it's completely gone. And I had suffered with that ever since I was little. Okay, this really works. Like, this is working. That's gone. I feel really good. Um, I feel really energized. I wasn't getting sore when I was going to the gym this is great. I'm going to do this. And it was really hard in the beginning because addiction to sugar and sweets was so severe that it was a, it was a struggle. It was a struggle for me to like get rid of that altogether. The more that time went on, it became a lot easier. So I think going strict with it, I would say was probably six, probably six months or more. That you've been doing now for yeah. six, longer. Longer than that? Yeah. I mean, you, you had a couple of hiccups, but... You... I mean, well, since... Well, if you... If we're... Yeah. I mean, a couple of hiccups along the way, but if... Yeah, probably December last year then. Yeah. 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 So, like, 10 months. Mm. Like, 10 months. Hmm. Yeah. 10 months now. 10, 11. Yeah, could be. Hey guys, just want to take a second to thank our sponsor at Carnivore Bar. I don't promote many products because honestly, all you need to be healthy is to just eat meat. But for those times that you're out hiking, road tripping, or stuck at work and you want a nutritious snack that is just meat, fat, and salt if you want it, the Carnivore Bar is a great option. So I like this product not because it's just pure meat, but also because I want the carnivore market to thrive as well. And the more we support meat-only products, the more meat-only products there will be available in the mainstream. So if this sounds like something you'd like to get behind, Behind. check it out using my discount code Anthony to get 10% off which also applies to subscriptions giving you 25% off total all right thanks guys yeah, yeah. and how are you feeling yeah I feel really good yeah. I feel great yeah how do you feel like what's the difference like what's uh, compare this to how you felt before you so before you like met me entirely yeah and before you started eating any more meat you're just eating what you normally did compare that to now okay well, um, I'd be extremely bloated all the time. Extremely bloated. I don't feel bloated anymore. Even though you didn't really eat, because you, you were eating quite a little small amount. I was eating small amounts, but I was still getting really bloated because yeah. it was the type of things that I was eating. Every time I'd go out with friends or anything like that, I'd always end up feeling sick. 
And that was just a normal, natural feeling to me, feeling sick after every meal. So that, the low energy, I was someone who suffered from very low iron. So I'd be super tired while I was working, super tired during the day. And now I just have so much energy. Good. Yeah. So that's the difference I feel for me. And what about like how long, you said it was hard for you to get over the carb cravings and sugar addiction. How long did that take you until you didn't really care anymore? It took a little while, but I kind of found um, a way to do it that worked well for me. I, I said to myself, okay, I've got, I've got two options here. I can, I can go out, see all these delicious desserts and sweets and things like that. You know, when I'm out with friends or just, you know, at the shopping center, I've got one or two things. I can just have it once and be like, I'll just deal with the repercussions of it later. Bad skin, low energy, all that kind of thing. Or I can be like, you know what, I have an addiction to sugar. Like this is controlling me. I can choose to like change my mindset and be like, I've, I'm in control of this. I get to choose if I want this or not. Because I was at the point where I was like, I don't, I don't have a choice. Like I want this. I'm going to have this. I don't have the choice to have it or not. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to choose to go out to restaurants and the shopping center and stuff like that and, and say to myself, okay, this isn't the last sticky date pudding. This isn't the last ice cream. This isn't the last piece of chocolate that I'm ever going to come across in my entire life. So I can always go back to it later on if I decide not to do this diet and that it doesn't work for me. I can be like, I can go, I can go back to that later. It's not the last sweet on earth that I'm going to come across. And me saying that to myself, that, that made it easy for me to like get rid of the cravings altogether because slowly over time, like I just didn't feel like I wanted it anymore. And then just thinking about like things like my psoriasis coming back and then having low energy, like I didn't want that. So I think it, how long it took me to get over the cravings, I would probably say, I don't know, I reckon it took a good for me six months. Wow. Okay. completely to completely be in control of that hmm. sugar addiction and you had six months like completely carbon sugar free or did you sort of slip up along the way i've had a few little slip ups since april not but very very few like it took yeah, you six it took months me, to get reckon, off of it i reckon it took me like six months to get off it okay to so feel like i was in control of, of that of that craving and addiction anyway yeah, yeah yeah well that's the thing you know with, with these addictions you know a lot of the chem chemical addictions can go away in you know a few weeks but then you just you just remember like very very fondly you know liking those things and think well why don't why do i have to stop i don't really need to stop i don't want to stop mm -hmm. And if you don't have a good reason to get away from like, I, I look at that stuff and I'm just like, that's poison. I want nothing to do with that. Yeah. You know, um, but not everybody does. And, and so if you, if you don't do that, you don't have a strong reason, then it's uh, more difficult. And you just remember how much you enjoyed it. And then you're in social situations where, you know, people are having them and you're thinking like, well, I'm missing out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It can take, take a while, especially then, because I guess that would help reinforce your reasons as to why you don't want to do it. Mm, yeah. No, I see like packs of smokes and stuff like that in the, um, in the shops. And, you know, I think, you know, there's so many people out there that look at that and like, I just need to grab one. Like, I just need to grab a pack today, you know? And it's the same with people with sugar addictions. I'll see like a little packet of lollies, like at the front counter. And they're like, I just need to grab that, you know? And it's really sad That's, to uh, see. candy for people who <laughs> oh, yeah. don't speak Australian. Lollies are candy. And it's really sad to see how many people don't realize that they are so controlled by their, their sugar addiction, Yeah. their carb yeah. addiction. It's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's the thing when you, when you're sort of on the outside of it looking in, Yeah. then, then you see like, even, even just seeing people's like shopping carts at Costco and things like it's that. So and you're bad. just like, it's just carbs and sugar, carbs yeah. and sugar all the time. And, you know, and, and I don't think people really realize that that's all that they're buying, you know, and, or that there's anything wrong with it. I mean, that's, that's the main thing. I see. It's like a lot of, a lot of the people would just be uneducated about it. Well, you know, it's, or, or, or miseducated about it because mm -hmm. they, they've been told their whole lives that that's good for them, yeah. that this low fat carbs are what's best for their heart. Yeah. You know, and you know, it couldn't be further from the truth. Yeah, that's right. Like a lot of people yeah. are fed the wrong information and it's the same as meat, you know, I, I've always grown up thinking, you know, 
about bowel cancer is like meat is related to bowel cancer. Yeah. And I remember thinking that about you. I'm like, this guy is must be riddled with bowel cancer. <laughs> <laughs> he has to be riddled with bowel cancer. And um, that's that's what you think, you know, because my stepmom, you know, suffered from bowel cancer and she got told like it's from eating red meat. And I'm just like, no, oh, this is so this wrong. Is so bad. But yeah. it, it's it's one of those things that's just been you repeated so many times that that's that's what people think and it's it's completely yeah. untrue. There was a you know a couple fraudulent epidemiological studies that that showed a very slight uh, correlation, like increased association with the consumption of processed meats, not unprocessed meats, but processed meats and bowel cancer. But it was like an eighteen percent increase, and uh, in epidemiological studies, because there's so many confounding factors, there's so many things that that mess up the signal that you really don't start paying attention until there's like a 200% increase. And you're like, oh, okay, all right, maybe there is something going on here. And that that original study had, uh, it was you know, very much um, push, pushing an agenda. And the people that authored it purposefully left out information and studies that went counter to that narrative. And, you know, which is fraudulent. You know that's not what you're supposed to do, and even then, they could only they could only manufacture an 18 percent increase, which is nothing. Um, the other studies that have been done that have control for these confounding factors have found that there really is no no association between this stuff. And again, that was processed meats, not unprocessed meats, not like just like just red meat, you know. And the 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 other thing too is that some of these epidemiological studies they'll look at they'll look at meat. We'll call it this meat. And, and so they'll ask you just on food surveys. So that's, that's how they do this. They do something, they literally give you a survey and say, you know, how many times have you had, you know, chicken in the last two years? Like how, how the hell would I know? You know, no one has the answer to that. That's and so it's just like, how many times have you had pizza? How many times a week would you have this? How many times a week would you have that? How many times, all these sorts of things. So they're highly inaccurate. And not only that, but they make them intentionally more inaccurate by fudging around their definitions because they will just call anything that may contain meat, meat. So even if it's mixed in with carbs. Yeah. And and seed oils and all sorts of nonsense. So pizza, because pizza sometimes has meat based toppings, pizza is considered meat. Right. So how many times do you eat pizza? Oh, I eat pizza three times a week. Oh, this guy eats meat three times a week, you know, and it has an increased correlation with bowel cancer. Damn that meat, you know, um, it's nonsense. You know, I mean, obviously you know, like something like pizza, you know, even if meat is bad for you, there's 13 other ingredients in there. Yeah. You know, how, how, how do you know which one's doing what, you know, you can't. So no, those are, those are just nonsense, but it's, it's something that is passed around all the time. I gave, um, a grand rounds talk, uh, to my, my department in neurosurgery, uh, just a couple of days ago, talking about the metabolic theory of cancer. If people saw my episode with professor Thomas Seafried, I, I presented a lot of actually his studies and other studies that, that looked at, uh, treating, uh, glioblastoma and brain cancers with a ketogenic diet and putting people in therapeutic ketosis and, and tracking their ketones and, and blood sugar and things like that. And, and going through the biology and why this is uh, something that would be a, a good potential target for uh, fighting cancer. And it actually was very well received, even though it was a very, very new tack that um, uh, not many people know about. Um, some did, but, but it, it, was, it was new to quite a lot of people. And that was one of that was one of the things that they asked, and it was, it was very respectful and polite. And they were like, "Oh, well, what about this? You know, if you're not going to eat carbs, you're not going to do this. Like, if you're going to eat more meat, what about the idea that you know red meat causes cancer, uh, bowel cancer, and things like that? And you know, what about that? Like, you know, are we sort of working against ourselves here? And it was it was it was a perfectly legitimate and reasonable question, and how it was posed, it wasn't like a uh, you know trying to be confrontational or anything like that. It was it was just a serious question. And so we, we, you know, got into it and discussed that more and we pulled up some studies and talked about it and, uh, and, and, you know, and they were you know, fine with that as well. They were like, yeah, that, that makes sense. You know, but, um, but, you know, even then, you know, this is something that just is very, very prevalent in, in the medical community as well 
as as everywhere else because it's just been repeated so many times that people are just like yeah that's what that is but unfortunately it's um well fortunately it's not but unfortunately you know people still um uh, think that that's the case yeah yeah no bowel cancer yeah yeah so uh, how does that work in in social settings how have you found that how do your friends accepting you that have they shunned you or you're not allowed to come to brunch anymore and they they throwing scones at you when you come around no. it's good. you know when i go out um to dinner you actually notice that a lot of people get you know meaty meals anyway yeah um and you know it's just topped with like vegetables and and other little sauces and stuff like that to make it look pretty Bread and things yeah, yeah oh yeah well, yeah and the, and the decorations yeah yeah but otherwise it's it's fine like people are pretty people are pretty accepting like i'm pretty lucky with my friend group um you know they're not judgmental like that yeah but you know i, I guess it would be hard for a lot of people who you know do go out with friends and their friends are like this is weird like we don't want you to come to a you know a dinner yeah. a dinner plans anymore you don't want we don't want you to come with us but yeah. you know it's been fine um and i try to include myself as much as i can you know like when it comes to desserts and stuff i just won't have that but, you know, with meals, I always look for, like, the meaty option. And, um, yeah, like, when it comes to hot drinks and stuff like that, I just have hot water, hot milk, and that's it. And it's in a takeaway cup. No one knows the difference. Mm -hmm. Same as, like, when, you know, my girlfriends will go out drinking and things like that. I have a sparkling water. It looks, it's sparkling. It looks like alcohol. And they don't know any different. They don't ask, you know. Yeah. So I just have that. It's fine. No one really questions anything. You know, I might get the funny, you know, look over, like, you know, them looking over and be like, what has she got? But, you know, other than that, it's fine. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's more how you feel yourself. Like, if you're self-conscious yeah, about it, yeah. then that's when it becomes an issue. But if you're, like, confident about it, you're like, hey, like, this is what I'm having. Like, I don't yeah, care exactly. what you think. It's fine. Yeah. And I, I think that's true. I mean, if you think about it, like, if you, if you just went to dinner and you weren't doing a specific, you know, uh, eating regimen. You know, and you just you just wanted you know big stack of ribs. Yeah. You know, people were like, "Well, you just yeah, I just want some ribs." You know, <laughs> and they're like, "All right, great." You know, and it's because like, who cares at the end of the day? Yeah. You know, sometimes people look at you as 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 you know, look at what you ordered. You know, because they they can't they haven't decided what they want to order. And like, oh, just 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 two racks of ribs. Huh? I'm like, yeah. that actually sounds pretty good. Maybe I'll, I'll get some. Yeah. You know, and I agree with you that like. When I first started doing this, like five, you know, when I was you know, twenty some years ago, I, I never thought about it like I'm doing this diet. I was just like, yeah. I'm just not going to eat plants. So I was just like, we'd be out, we'd do things, and I would just get the meat option, and I would just eat the meat part of it, and I just didn't say anything about yeah. it, and I didn't care, and I didn't think about it, and no one said a thing. Yeah. Like in the entire time for years, no one said a thing, yeah. and then then I started doing this again, sort of five six years ago, and now I'm really thinking about it. And now I become very conscious about that the fact that I'm eating very differently and, and how I'm doing it and why I'm doing it. And then because I was very much more conscious about it, other people were more conscious of what I was doing as well. Yeah. And so then it, at first I was I felt a bit sort of awkward when I would go out to eat with people. And and then I just stopped caring. And yeah. it just went away. And then everyone else stopped caring too. I think the only time it gets a little weird is when you start saying you know, don't put this on it, don't put that, take that away. And when you start right. asking, yeah. you know, for it to be really different and you've got all these special requests, that's when people start looking at you and like, okay, this is a little strange yeah. and it's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> um, not to me personally, but to others that, yeah. that, you know, but once again, I think it just comes back to, you know, how, you know, you, you're thinking while you're, you know, ordering stuff like that. But I also find like when I go, out with my girlfriends to lunch or dinner and always wait to see what I'm ordering. They're like, well, what are you going to get? So if I'm just like, oh, I just want, you know, um, eggs and bacon, no bread and holiday sauce or whatever. My friends will be like, yeah, make that too. Yeah. You know, so they, they always want to just have what you're having anyway. Well, I know that's what my friends are like. It's fine. I've never really had an issue with it when it comes to, to, you know, eating out socially with, with others. Yeah, and and like you say, like most of the time, people are ordering things with meat anyway. Yeah, and so it's not really all that much of a difference. And when you go out to get like steaks or something like that, mm -hmm. it generally comes all a cart anyway. And there's not a bunch of sides and things. They always will always ruin it with some parsley or something like that. You know, they just have to dust some, you know, 
Mm. Like, every time. Death just, leaves on it, yeah. you know? Britain is obviously too boring. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's just a like, snake. Yeah. Um, yeah, the point of coming here is, is, is the experience, of course, not the actual food. And so you have to, you have to experience it. It has to be like, you know, a, uh, you know, culinary marvel and masterpiece. And it is, it, it looks good. Don't get me wrong. Like when they come out and, you know, they've got this beautiful, beautifully presented, you know, plate with like strawberries and, you know, all these different colored fruits and it's just all placed really nicely. It looks inviting. Yeah. Like, you know, you want to eat that, but, you know, it's just nice to observe and yeah. appreciate the time and effort they put into making it look it into the trash. <laughs> yeah. There's a meme I saw that said, like, you know, when cooking spinach, you know, you know, use coconut oil and like mix it in with that because it, ha it makes it uh, easier to slide off into the trash <laughs> at the end. Yeah. <laughs> So I, I think that um, you've been pretty um, strict with it recently. Have you been sort of as strict as I've been with it, except for like dairy and things like that? Yeah, I, I pers for me personally, I well actually no, I was going to say that I don't see a difference with dairy, but I do. I get bad skin. Yeah, and you've seen that. Yeah, well, <laughs> so it's yeah. so, so, so every, every single time you still like so eat dairy and then you go. Like, can't believe I did this. You know, my skin's getting worse and everything like that. Like I'm not, I'm not eating dairy anymore. And then it'll sort of fade away. And she's like, Oh, I actually think it was something else. I got this new skin thing. And now it's, and now it's doing so much better. I was like, well, no, it's, it's doing better because you've stopped eating dairy. No, I don't think that's what it is. And then, you know, a few weeks later, she'll have dairy again and we'll repeat the process. And yeah. so yeah. We're, no. we're in that phase of her recognizing that it's the dairy. Dairy is bad. No, yeah. I can, I completely agree. And it is actually nice you know, going out and having someone like having someone there going, are you sure you want to have that before when you, when you would, when you would do that to me, I'd be like, you know, are you trying to tell me what to do? Like what I can and can't have, like you can't do that. But now I see it as, you know, you got like being a, you know, someone who is supporting me going, are you sure you want to do that? Like you, there's going to be repercussions. Like, are you sure you want to do with that? Or well, you're probably like, I don't want to hear the whinging about it later on. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I don't, dairy is a hard one for me. Maybe it's one that I need to work on. Well, so I definitely yeah. haven't been as strict as you in terms of dairy. Yeah. Well, there are there are natural opiates in dairy as well. Yeah. And they can um, potentially be addictive from that. That includes butter, though, well. right? When, you know, the more that you extract out uh, from the dairy and sort of make it more, um, you know, take take away different segments of it, you know, the less likely you are. You're, you're just going to you're just going to eliminate certain things. So I don't know if those natural opiates make it into butter. They could. I'm not sure, um, but I don't want to stop eating butter. So <laughs> I like butter. Yeah. Well, the thing is too is it just it really matters if you whether or not you have problems with dairy or not because I don't really you know if I if I were to eat a lot of dairy or I drink a lot of milk then I'd want to drink more milk and I yeah. feel that sort of addictive Until nature like of of maybe the opiates, but definitely the carbs. And mm -hmm. like, I just want more, I want more, I want more. Yeah. And, and so I, I, I just avoid that just because I don't like that feeling. Um, but also if I were, you know, I did an experiment. I just want to sort of see, and I just, so I got some like heavy cream and I added it to whole milk. And so it's just to get like the percentage of fat up. And, and I just like, that's all I drank. I, I just drank like a gallon of that a day. And I just did this for like four or five days. I just wanted to see. challenge. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, with like cream, heavy cream. Yeah. Sort of like, like the Maasai without the blood, you know? And, um, because it, it's hard to get blood, which is very, very Is that annoying. hard to get blood? It, it is actually. Like I had, I had one place that, that I was able to find, find on the boat shed, uh, butcher in, in, uh, Cottesloe. And, uh, and they were just like a major, like, you just want to check. Yeah, yeah, we can get that for you. But it's like, they only get it like, you know, once a week, once every couple of weeks. And so they called me when they had it in and I went and picked it up and they just gave it to me for free. They, they were, they were just like, they just wanted to see the show, you know? They wanted to see you drink it? No, they just wanted to see, they just, they were just amazed that someone actually wanted it, you know? And, um. What a crazy thing. Yeah, well, it was more than crazy because it still had some like 
hog hairs oh, in it. Gross. <laughs> like, That's disgusting. It was really bad. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> and, yeah. And, and so uh, oh. you had to pick those out. There's only a couple. That's fine. But, but I wanted to do like, make like a whole bunch of like, you know, blood sausages and black pudding and things like that, but with just carnivores sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, that was my intention anyway, but yeah. So with the milk, I did that for like four days and felt fine, you know, had good energy, you know, didn't need to stop to eat. I was just sort of drinking the stuff and that was it. And I just drank my meal and, and went on with things. And I was working like night shifts that week and, uh, felt fine. But at the end of it, I wasn't, I wasn't as like cut. You know, I wasn't as, as like lean as I normally would have been. And at that point I was, I was actually very, very lean because I was playing, I was still playing rugby at that point. I still had time to. And so I was, I was, I think probably around, I think around 6% body fat. And, um, so I was, I was very, very shredded. And, and then I just, just drank the milk for like a few days. And then it was, I, I just sort of got a little softer around the edges you know still you know still was in very good shape was still quite lean but it I wasn't as just like as uh shredded as i had been yeah you know so that's what i noticed with with dairy. with dairy and it's certainly milk you know especially because of the carbs and it's hard for me to gauge how much if i'm going to do that how much i would want to drink and mm -hmm. how much i would i would need because I always want to drink more because those carbs keep telling you you're hungry, you're hungry, eat mm -hmm. more, eat more, eat more. Yeah. And so that's difficult. So I couldn't actually tell when I was done. I just capped it at a gallon with some like added cream in it. Actually a lot of added cream into it. And so, and that, and I just sort of guessed, but it was, you know, probably too much because I was, I was getting a little more fluffy. Pudgy. Yeah. yeah pudgy. <laughs> Do you notice the difference with cheese? If I have enough of it, yeah, yeah. Because I find that probably is worse for me than than milk. Yeah. Cheese. Every time I have cheese, I just break out so badly. Well, cheese has a lot more in it though, as Is well. It? Yeah, so it's gonna have it, you know you use different sort of bacteria to you know ferment it, and develop it into cheese in the first place. It's gonna have different different chemicals just from those reactions and the bacteria yeah. that have done that. So they can have sort of different things, okay. and so. You know, you could you could be reacting to something like that. Mm. Dairy's been dairy's definitely been hard. I think that it's it's one thing that I do want to try and be strict with though, and, and stop that altogether. Because mm -hmm. when I think about it, I don't I don't need it. Mm -hmm. Like I drink water during the day anyway. I don't I don't know when I have milk. Maybe I don't really have milk that often. I think it's just cheese. I think it's mostly cheese. I think it's yeah. mostly cheese. So has have any of your friends or clients like asked you about it or gotten interested or tried it for themselves from your so, influence? So many of my clients ask me yeah. about it. Yeah. They look me up on Instagram. They look up my personal account. They're like, what is she doing? Like, what is going on? But mainly because, you know, they're like, you're, you're looking really good. Like, you look really healthy. You look really happy. Like, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing differently? Because they, you know, clients that came to me before I started the diet, and they're like still coming to see me now, they can see the difference. Yeah. And they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm doing this carnival lifestyle. I call it the carnival lifestyle. I don't yeah. say diet. Yeah. Because people freak yeah. out. And they're like, yeah. okay. And then I have to explain to them it's similar to keto, you know, mm -hmm. minus the veggies, yeah. all the fruits and veggies and nuts and things like that. Yeah. Well, keto wouldn't have fruit because yeah. keto is no carbs. And so. Oh, so keto doesn't even have fruit. Oh, okay. No, that's, that's the whole, that's the whole idea that the whole, you know, like the whole talking about, you know, like people doing carnivore having fruit, like they're not even doing keto, you know? What do they have as their sweetener? I mean, keto people. Yeah. Well, it just depends. I mean, like they might have like different artificial sweeteners or stevia or monk fruit monk sugar fruit. thing. That's where I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. And so, I don't know. And some people use that. Other people don't. I've spoken to a lot of people who did keto for years and years and years, lost a ton of weight, you know, felt great, looked great. Mm -hmm. And then they started having all the keto treats and keto snacks and keto cookies and keto cake. And, and they just put on tons of weight. And so, keto you know, you can, and keto cake. yeah, well, it's just, a bit, it's a bit weird, isn't it? You know, it's, it is very strange. And so, you know, you're, you know, it's, it's this idea that, you know, you're supposed to be eating certain things. You're supposed to be avoiding other things, but with keto, you're just, you're just avoiding carbs. I mean, that, that's what keto means. Just like vegan, you should eliminate meat, but that doesn't mean that what you're eating is positive. It just means you're not eating this other thing. 
you know, having, having that, having that sort of mindset is, is a bit different than trying to think of what I should eat and what is optimal for me to eat and what is optimal for me to eat is here and things outside of here are suboptimal. Now, whether they're still good for me and they're still okay, or they're bad for me, they're still not as good as what's optimal. And so that's, that's, you know, um, how I think of it. I'm not just thinking, well, I'm just kind of avoiding these sorts of things because then you can find this other thing that doesn't necessarily exactly meet that criteria. And, oh, I can have that then, like a keto cookie with stevia. So people get into that. And so people have problems with it. I, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people that do just fine with some of these things, but I've, I've spoken to a lot of people that have put on a lot of weight from, from doing the keto cookies and the keto snacks and things mm -hmm. like that and, and not having any carbs. Yeah. But it's doing something to them yeah. that's, you know, either raising their insulin or, or messing with their biochemistry in some other fashion that is causing them to start depositing fat and overeating. Yeah. 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 But yeah, going back to um, my clients and things like mm. that, like, yeah, I get heaps of people asking me. I have my carnivore snacks or crisps that I have on a bag on my front desk. So when they go to pay, they're like, what is that? Yeah. Or I'll have like a, a plate of mints or like a, a steak that I'm like eating for lunch. They're like, oh, what are you having for lunch? Is it, are you just having meat? And I'm like, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it's also a good conversation starter. When girls sit in a salon chair, they just like blurt out everything that's on their mind. <laughs> They'll tell you all the problems that they've got, all the problems that they're having, you know, just all the everything. All their boyfriends are having. Yeah, yeah, and that too. Let them come in. They're like, I'm suffering from, I like I'm having a really bad week. I suffer from IBS, IBD. Great. And I'm like, great, uh, great <laughs> conversation. Girl, honestly, girls will talk about anything. And I'm like, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. And then that's when I start to talk about, you know, mm -hmm. I'm actually doing this and you should watch, you know, my boyfriend's videos and things like that. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time I recommend them to go and watch your videos and mm -hmm. they'll end up messaging me and going, oh my gosh, like, this is amazing. Like, thank you for sending this through. But a lot of people suffer from really bad chronic illnesses and, and they think that their diet is fine. It's got nothing to do with it, yeah. but it really does. And they think that they've, they've got that and they've got to suffer with that forever. Unless they're on like proper medication or they've got to go and do more tests. And the thing is like, well, what I'm eating couldn't have anything to do with it or what I'm doing to myself couldn't have possibly have anything to do with that. I just need this medication. And it's just like, mm -hmm. well, this disease didn't come about from a lack of that medication that didn't exist five years ago. Yeah. You know, and, uh, you know, diabetes doesn't exist because people have a metformin deficiency that they normally make metformin and then like their body's just for some reason doesn't make it like a type one diabetic. They're not making insulin anymore. Well, you just have to supplement insulin, yeah. you know, fine. But, you know, these other issues are not that, you know, and you, you don't have high blood pressure because, you know, you, you've run out of some of these high blood pressure medications. Like that's just not what's happening. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's sort of putting window dressing on a problem as opposed to actually fixing your, your broken window yeah and that's the main problem is that something's something's has happened and that and something is continuing to happen and that is what's perpetuating this disease state that that's just how we think because that's how we've been thinking for decades now yeah you know it's just like you have, you have a, you know you have a problem and so we should figure out well where's the pill and, and people get lazy like that they go to a doctor and they say hey fix me give me a pill mm -hmm. you know and, and, you know, they asked for it and they got it. And so now that's what doctors do. They just try to find a pill for you yeah. because people are just like, well, I want something easy. I just want a pill. Quick, and easy fix. Yeah. Band-aid option. Yeah. And so then people are making more and more pills and more and more pills and yeah. that's big business. And so that sort of is a, is a self, you know, self-perpetuating machine. And now there's tons of people that are on 13 different medications. Yeah. They have no idea how they got there. And you have medications that are causing all these different side effects. We take medications for those side effects yeah. and, and, and you go down, you go down this prescription cascade. And everything else that it's doing inside their gut, like having all that medication, yeah. you know, that's probably what is, what, cause, is what is causing the bowel cancer. You know, having all of that medication go through. Well, it's, it's, it was not out of, it's not out of the question. I mean, these are, these are foreign chemicals that, yeah. you know, we don't ex exactly know what they do to our body. 
And uh, you never know. You never know. I mean, I'm sure some of them are contributing that. to that. Well, I'm sure some of them are. I'm sure some some things are contributing to that. Maybe in a roundabout way, or maybe in a direct way. But well, they say that yeah. if you, I mean, I don't know if this is true, but they they say that like if you take certain medications on an empty stomach, then it causes stomach ulcers. That's how because that's how it affects your physiology. So like some of the, some of these things will well. The, the ones that cause ulcers are things like you know steroids or uh, non steroidal anti-inflammatories that knock out the prostaglandins in your stomach that protect your stomach from the stomach acid mm -hmm. and so you just you just sort of stop some of your chemical defenses from the acid and then your stomach is much more vulnerable to that and so it, it just starts eating away in your own body mm -hmm. and so so that's how that works and then what's that all of that doing to the rest of your body you know, as it's as it's breaking down and like going through everything. Well, but it, it, it breaks down certain things, right? But yeah, you're right. But I mean, as one doctor I knew uh, pointed out, you know, drugs and medications don't have side effects. Mm -hmm. They have effects. And some of those effects are, are effects that you want and others are effects that you don't want. But they're all effects of this drug. And so these drugs, like NSAIDs, they knock out your, your COX-1 and COX-2. Um, uh, they're COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitors. And so they, those have downstream effects and that that's, you know, some of those effects are what you want. Other ones are not what you want, and, but you've got to contend with it. You know, you have to, you have to contend with how much you don't want to hurt and be in pain yeah. or, you know, have blood clots and things like that. Mm. And so if you were healthy and eating properly, you probably wouldn't need those things in the first place. You wouldn't have to go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. I don't think your friends have ever asked you about it. I don't think they really care. I don't really care. But you know, when I, when I do talk to my clients and stuff about it, I, you know, I tried, I can't really relate to like bowel syndrome or, you know, diabetes and stuff like that because I've never had it. But I do say to them, look, like I don't suffer from restless leg syndrome anymore. Like I used mm -hmm. to have that all the time. Like I try to explain like all the good benefits that I receive from it, from like doing this, this lifestyle. Like I would wake up quite a few times every week from restless legs during the night. It would keep me awake and I'd feel so tired. Like it was horrible that, and then the chill bones, like I never get them anymore. Them You've medical. never. <laughs> I just don't think that's a word. I just don't think that's a real word. <laughs> so chill bones is something that I've suffered from for many years. And I didn't realize that it was from just, I think. I, I personally think it was from my diet. A lot of people have said it's from the cold. It's from poor blood circulation. Like I tried everything to stop, you know, stop from getting them every winter. But even when it wasn't winter, I was even getting them in summer. It was so strange. Anyway, I don't get them anymore. I There was one instance where I did get like a tiny little one, like quite a few months ago. But oh, I used to suffer from so badly to the point where I couldn't wear shoes. So I try and explain all of that to them and like all the good benefits that I receive from it to try and get them to like, be like, okay, maybe I should try this to get rid of my diabetes or get rid of my irritable bowel syndrome or, you know, other things that they're um, suffering from. Let's do a poll. Is it, who has heard of chill blains? All right. Is that a real word? Or is this, is this, a, is this, is this just, is, is this just something that, that was like a weird pet name that your family had? Or like getting like, you know, it's a real thing. You can Google that. it. It's a real thing. I don't know. You know <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of fake things that, that, that are on Google. So I don't know. Chill planes, maybe one of them. I don't know. We'll see. Let's, let's do, let's do a poll. Let's yeah. prove I don't know. What, I'm, I'm just asking. It's a sci scientific inquiry. Like, I'm just, I'm just curious. I've never heard of these things. In my you life. thought I made it up. You're like, what is that? I still <laughs> think you made it up. I haven't. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Eloise, I really appreciate it. And, um, and, uh, hopefully that you guys, uh, you know, found something useful in that. And, and, you know, just sometimes going through these like personal experiences uh, that people have in there, um, and how they dealt with it and how they got through it, uh, can be helpful and encouraging. And so hopefully that was uh, for a lot of people. So thank you very much for that. Yeah. Thank you for having me on. And I, I think that, you know, I don't only speak for myself, but a lot of people, when I say that, you know, it's, it's really good that you provide, you know, you do these talks and provide, you know, so much good information for people to, to, um, to look at. And we're very grateful and appreciative that you do that. Oh, thank, <laughs> so you. thank you.
You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate that. If you uh, like that or you like the show in general, please just hit the bell and like and subscribe on YouTube and uh, you know subscribe on the podcast as well. And uh, if there's a review to give, you can please give one. Uh, that would be great. And it is really helpful. So thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, hopefully you found that helpful. All right. We'll see you later. Hey guys, thank you very much for taking the time out to listen to what I had to say. If you like it, then please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel and podcast. And if you're on YouTube, then please hit that little bell and subscribe. And that'll let you know anytime I have a new video out, which should be every week, if not more. And if you could share this with your friends, that would help me get the word out and let me know that you like what I'm doing. Thanks again, guys. Thank you.